Feeling high on a forest fire I just want to say, like, I really, really, really love intros on albums, especially when an intro is like letting you know where the artist is going to go on the project. So like just hearing this intro with the dark synthesizers, the bass line, the break beat, and just everything about it, you can just kind of tell what kind of journey this album is going to take you on, which is, you know, as a producer, I, I always, always appreciate, appreciate that. Just knowing that we're about to go somewhere a little different, a little bit left. Um, man, I can't wait to really listen so I can give you my real thoughts on it. I'm just taking it all in. Like, it's like as a producer, I'm listening to every single sound and everything that's happening. And now listening to it in the headphones, I'm hearing stuff panning left to right. And I'm hearing like the mix. And, uh, this is, this is cool. A different listening experience and listening through these big speakers, which is meant to play everything flat so I can hear every, um, every nuance in the music and here this is more for like consumer so it's like now i'm getting like all the ear candy and stuff so this is cool who was it girl you care for one project can't fuck my mind Oh no, I'm pause it really quick. So, uh, yeah, you just said it. He's like, you like how he's rapping on here, his flow and his tone. Like, he sounds super, super locked in. Like, I hear music all the time, and I can tell when the artist is like really, really focused. I think that three inspirations for this album were probably uh, To Pimp a Butterfly, which is Kendrick's second album, um, Igor by Tyler the Creator and probably um, Late Registration by Kanye West. Uh, late Registration had uh, John Bryan, who was the producer for Fiona, Apple, Fiona Apple's uh, first few albums. He's a really, really, really amazing producer, really dope with synthesizers. He's really good at using synths in a dark way. And this album so far, especially his first four tracks, first three tracks, give me like that feel from like late registration and mix with like to pimp a butterfly because uh what is the second track called oh nuts that sounds like something like like i could hear like thundercat playing like a bass like that which is dope because i've always thought that that would be a really dope collab like rm doing something with thundercat so it's really cool to hear him do a record like that like i just i get excited for good music so this is like this is, this is fire. You won't get it, free so better come with me. Look, step in the place and they yell, go figure. Watch, I'ma go all out for my hit R. I already told them I'm a gorilla. Sims an RM and it don't get bigger. Catch me in the back when my G's them. Greet them with respect when you see them. Run me up a check. I'm I was gonna let the next song play, but hold on a second. That track is insane. Ah, I wonder if they shot a video before before he had to leave free my boy free my boys free my guys man the fuck i wonder if they shot a video for that if they shot a video for that i already know it's gonna be so crazy but that part where little sims comes in and the little drums pick up like that that's that's crazy i gotta go to a little underground club in the uk and hear that somewhere so i can get the full 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 effect of that it's insane um i don't the credits aren't up yet on on here can somebody send me uh do they have like the can somebody send me the the um oh they did they shot a video for this oh shit i can't wait to see that can somebody send me the the credits i want to see who produced what i want to see the the behind the scenes people that are involved in this because musically this is just this is phenomenal god that track is so good all right i'm not gonna loop it we're gonna hear the next one what 
you guys hear that? You guys, you guys, you guys realize how great that was? That's not normal good. That's like, that was great. That was musically great. Wow. It's greatness. That was fire. He, they named, I mean, the song is question mark. I can't even be mad at it being named question mark because what the fuck did I just listen to? It's just incredible. All right, anyways. Wow, I don't really have much more to say. It's an incredible, incredible album. <laughs> yeah, no, that was a great album. Um, I feel like artists often, like, you hear little bits of an album that they're trying to make every time they make a body of work. And I feel like this is the album that he's probably always tried to make. But I just think you need a certain amount of like life experiences, musical uh, experiences, expertise, to where you just build up to a certain point. And I think once you build up there, you kind of make an album that's just like the album that you've been trying to get out of your head the whole time i feel like this is that album i feel like he's been trying to make this album the whole time and i think he nailed it this time i hear a lot of the influences and he did a he, the inf, he utilized those influences in a great way so when i say influences i don't mean copying or biting anybody or nothing like that i'm just saying like you know as creators we all have things that we love and we always love things that might not even be in the genre of music that we actually make, but it can still inspire the kind of music that we make in our own ways. And, you know, I hear that in, in everybody's music. Um, so I think with this album, I can just hear a lot of the influences. Uh, Kendrick Lamar to Pimp a Butterfly is a big influence for this album, I believe, especially with all the live instrumentation. So many really, really, really cool elements of just like black soul music with like the jazz in here and the instrumentation with the horns and his flow on top of it. Like, uh, I love it. I love when artists can especially like introduce styles of music that shows that they just love the history of music to an audience that may or may not be uh, as familiar with it. So I always inspire people to go back and like listen to the other things that could have possibly inspired these albums. I think Tyler the Creator's Igor is a big influence on this album. I think Thundercats music. I think I said late registration. Um and his his rap, like I feel like he's just kinda like I feel like on this album I feel like he wasn't I feel like I didn't hear him sound uncomfortable at all rapping on here. I feel like every Every song where he started rapping, he sounded so comfortable. Like, he just sounded, like, really, really, really in that space in his bag where it's just, like, effortless. He's doing different things with his voice, even some of the ad-libs. He just sounds, like, in total control, and he did and said exactly what he wanted to say. I can't wait to sit down with this sometime over the weekend, probably Sunday or something, and really listen to the production and also listen to the lyrics and pull up, um, you know, Genius or, or something like that so I can see some of the lyrical translations uh, when he's rapping in Korean so I can get a little bit more context of, like, the overall message of what he's saying. But even without knowing the language, like, I can still feel it. Like, I can feel the tone. I feel like I can feel exactly where he was at while he was creating this, this album. This album is super dope. This is my favorite album of his so far. And I've liked all of them. Um, there's really cool spots of things that I liked. I actually 
have broken down the production uh, on Indigo uh, for a few different songs on Indigo. And I'll be posting that soon. It's hard to post certain things like that because if I post it on Twitter, then, it, you know, they, they flag it for uh, for copyright. And if I put it on YouTube, I get a copyright strike, which will screw up my YouTube. So um, I do have a Patreon made. I'm still thinking about how I want to function with that because um, I would love to give as much of these as I can. But there's also like, you know, copyright issues with stuff like that too so figuring it out but i'll let you guys know um i actually did a whole breakdown of closer uh which is actually the thumbnail that i use for this stream but i did a breakdown of closer wildflower um change part two and lonely and i did a whole breakdown of that really just talking about the production and talking about the lyrics and I have all the stems to the song. So I'm playing certain parts of the songs, uh, totally isolated. So you can just hear RM's vocal with just the drums. So you can hear him rapping over the drums. And I also did a lot of little fun things here and there to where I show like, you know, how this track would sound if it was over this kind of beat or over that kind of beat, kind of like remixes live on the fly. So that's something to look out for. Um, I just need to figure out how, in the best way to give it to you guys so you guys can see it. But this is fun. This is my first time ever uh, jumping on live stream and listening to an album. And what a great fucking album to do that to. It was such a good listen. I thought I was only going to be on here for a half hour and jump off, but it was so good on first listen. I wanted to hear it again. I actually, like, enjoy, like, hearing something and being a little bit confused when I'm first hearing it. Like, where is this going to go? And then there's all these different surprises where it just kind of just went. And all these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful directions. And, wow, that was great. I think that that might, that's my favorite album by any of the guys solo projects and you know I've, I've enjoyed all of them but that was like that was amazing because it felt it felt really like him it felt like that's where he was at that's where he wanted to be um you know sometimes when you're making an album and and obviously you gotta service it to so many different people especially when you're coming from a group that's so 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 successful when you're making your solo album you have uh, you have leeway, but there's also like, you know, you feel like the, the need to kind of like cater it towards certain things. And I think that's what's always been cool about BTS is all their solo projects. It sounds like a little bit more of whatever their personality is. But this album right here felt like this is completely where he was at at the time that he made it and exactly what he wanted to do without any outside influence. He said, I think he said he prepared for you. Yeah, you can you can hear it. Like you can hear I'd even imagine that he had some of his favorite ideas or some of his favorite skeletons for this record while he put out Indigo. And he probably had some of these songs started, like ideas for them started, but they weren't ready and they didn't fit that project. So I I think this is an album that he's had in in his mind that he's been trying to make for a long time and i'm glad that he took his time and didn't rush some of these songs to try to squeeze them onto indigo and, and gave it its own moment and its own body of work so it can be heard in a way that just like this this was a great it was a great listening experience like my first listen is on these gigantic speakers in here i can't turn my camera around i would show you but it's like plugged into the stream and my second listen was on uh, a pair of DJ headphones. So I got to like hear all the sonic elements. So um, it's really cool to just even run that back twice and, and listen and chop it up with you guys and talk about the music because that's great. He indicated he was already working on it as soon as Indigo dropped. Yeah. This is what a dope body of work. I got to go grab a copy of this tomorrow. And hopefully, I gotta. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to email the good folks over at Big Hit Music, Hybe, 
and tell them that this needs to be on vinyl. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to actually do that and tell them that this needs to be on vinyl because I have a record player. I have a whole section over here in my studio on the back wall with vinyl with some speakers where I have like some of my favorite albums and this will be an album I would love to put in that collection and uh, and be able to listen to when I just want to put it on because I, I want to hear it like that. I want to hear the crackle of the vinyl, the analog feel of it. This was a really, really dope album. I'm going to check out the video for Lost. I'll probably check it out before I go to bed tonight. But yeah, what a what an album. I don't even, I can't even give you a favorite right now. Like, if I was forced to pick a favorite, and I mean like really, really forced, like somebody kidnapped my mom and said pick a favorite. Man, maybe, how do you say this? Domodachi with Little Sims? I don't know if I'm saying that right or not. Maybe that one. Maybe Nuts. I pr probably Nuts. I probably got to pick that one. If I had to pick right now. I don't have a favorite. I don't think I will have a favorite on this. I think this is an album that pretty much every time I listen to it, I think I'll start it at track one and just let it play all the way through. Because... I don't know. That's just how I feel tonight. I'll let you guys know how I feel later, but this definitely needs and deserves uh, vinyl and man, what album. It was 34 minutes of just great music. Wow. So anyways, I'm about to get out of here. I need to eat me a little something. I've been working all day long. And yeah, thanks for thanks for uh, popping in and hanging out with me while we got to take in this incredible album. I love moments like this. Hopefully, we got to do this again as new projects come out. Wait, somebody said something. He and Jimin have a video coming where they talk about this album. Oh, dope. Yeah, there's also some stuff come. Oh. Never mind. Nothing. Um, yeah, we gotta do <laughs> we gotta do this again. I just gotta make sure that I just don't get like overly comfortable and start saying stuff that I'm not supposed to talk about. But um super dope album. You guys are always the best. You already know that. You already know how I feel about you guys, so this was fun. I think I'll jump back on on uh, on Sunday. I think I'll jump back on, and when I jump on on Sunday, I will uh, uh, talk about the album a little bit more. I want to talk about the uh, talk about the production. What's up, big bro? Uh, I want to talk about the production. I'll see if I can get um, the stems to a couple of these songs, and I want to like kind of go through. Uh, especially like that number uh, track five question marks on with those drums and like just that I want to hear like I want to break that down the one with little sims the bass on nuts I want to hear that by itself like that's that's crazy too it's so much like yeah I'm gonna I'm break this down and we'll figure out how to uh how to how to go in depth because I want to sit with this for a couple of days and hear it some more. And then I want to give you uh, my other opinions on it after I've gotten a chance to digest it. I got it. I, I heard it on the speakers. I heard it in the, in the headphones. And now you know where I got to hear it at next the car test, baby. We got to do the car test. I got to go hear it in the car and then I'll be ready to like really break down the rest of it. So um, yeah, I'll see you guys on Sunday. Let's tap in on Sunday. Um, I don't know what time works best, but I'll try to just kind of see when I'm chilling and I'll tweet it. So if you follow me on Twitter at sleep D's and yeah, let's chop it up. Talk to you guys on Sunday. Peace.